Welcome to another week of Caps Chat. I am Cody Lefkowitz, the voice for your Capitals, and I'm here again with head coach and general manager Tom Upton. Tom, what's it, what's the last week been like for you? You know what? The last week last week was a little busier with some phone calls to all the guys coming to training camp, just touching base uh, with myself and Alyssa, our athletic trainer. Obviously, there's um, some protocol that the league has put forward that we need to do in regards to COVID-19 testing and travel arrangements and things like that for coming to camp so we were just on the on the phone all week um taking care of that with with Alyssa so it was kind of a it was a busier week just with a lot of phone work last week so now we're back at it again uh this week just in a little bit of a different way doing some more communicating but you know just different things for camp so and talking capitals you guys have new players coming in but you also have new guys coming into uh the hockey operations and um, one of the guys you brought in within the last month was Bobby Giuliano, the new equipment manager, uh, I think third one in the past three years maybe. Uh, what did you see in Bobby? Where did you guys find him? You know, how, how's he going to fit in with the team? Yeah, so Bobby, uh, Bobby's coming to us from SUNY Cortland, a D3 program in upstate New York. And um, great young guy, really motivated, really good at what he does, very detailed and organized, which I think is a very important uh, area of the equipment manager job, to be honest. Um, you know, he's at the rank early and he's there late and he absolutely loves taking care of our guys. So he came pretty highly recommended from their head coach at Cortland, uh, Joe Cartarelli, who's a good friend of mine. And Joe and I go back a number of years, um, along with working with some division one programs around his area. Uh, he came pretty highly recommended from those Division One guys as well. So um, even though he's a little bit younger, he's got a number of years of experience at the collegiate level already and wanted to transition into the USHL and hopefully continue to move on to, uh, to maybe a big-time Division One school or maybe the NHL one day. And he felt that this was the right step to take. And at the end of the day, we went through an interview process with a lot of uh, great applicants. And Bobby was the one who kind of separated himself with uh, not only the recommendations that came from the people around him, but you know, just his blue collar background and the fact that he comes from division three and hasn't really been, you know, handed a whole lot and had to work on his toes with, with, you know, some limited resources at times and all that. So Corey and I really enjoyed that about him. And, and obviously we share some of that same blue collar mentality and we thought it'd be a right fit. And so far it's been, he's been with us for a number of weeks and uh, he's been awesome. He's pretty much done with everything that he needed to do. And uh, he's just waiting on the boys to arrive like the rest of us. So he's, He's been phenomenal so far, and, and, he's, and he's a good guy, and he's a good guy to be around. So we're, we're enjoying having him so far. And you mentioned him taking this step, going from uh, collegiately working to the USHL. And this, this league is sort of a stepping stone. You know, a lot of people like to say that it's a stepping stone, and it's not only a stepping stone for players who obviously go on. They play in college. They play in the NHL. But uh, for coaches, I think John Cooper is sort of the biggest guy that a lot look at, uh, you know, for broadcasters, for players, for coaches, for equipment managers, athletic, I mean, uh, across the board, this is sort of a stepping stone for people that want to move on and want to keep going is uh, the USHL has done a great job and it, it's, it's just outstanding what they've been able to do. Yeah, no, I totally agree. You know, obviously that's, that's part of the reason too, why I, why I came back to this league in, in this capacity as head coach and GM coming from division one hockey. And um, like you said, it just opens up so many doors, this league, whether, whether you want to, whether you want to uh, continue to play and hopefully play in the NHL or coach in the NHL or work in the NHL as a broadcaster, equipment manager, um, whatever it may be, uh, you know, you can realistically get to that level from this league. You know, you might not get there right from this league, but this league will put you on that track. And, um, you know, again, those are the types of people that we want to surround ourselves with, right? You know, whether it's yourself wanting to do this job in the, in the NHL one day or me and Corey wanting to coach in the NHL one day or, the, or, it's, or it's one of the boys wanting to play in the NHL one day. I think uh, those are the types of people we need in our organization, people that want to continue to, to grow and develop and get to the highest level, you know, because you got to have that fire. You got to have that hunger. And, you know, I always say, and I'm going to say to the guys when they get here, like you got to act like you're in the NHL before you're there. And that goes for me. That goes for you. That goes for the guys on the team, you know, and again, it goes back to how we speak and how we talk and present ourselves and, how we live our lives every day and, and obviously play and coach and broadcast, um, you know, but you, you, you don't just make it to a level and start acting like it. I truly believe that you start acting and start working like that before you arrive there. So that's, that's part of the reason why Bobby was a good fit too. He wants to do this at the highest level, just like the rest of us. And that's an important piece for us with the Capitals organization. And I know that was always a big thing when I was going through school was they always said, um, don't dress for the job you have, dress for the job you want. And 
like you said, it's the same thing with acting. You don't act for the job you have, you act for the job you want. And, um, you know, like we said, whether it's front office coaching or the players and, and you guys have gotten to see some young guys who have gotten to show themselves off and, and who's been ready for this level. And we have some good camps coming up as well. Uh, the virtual camp started here this week, uh, online training. We'll talk about that. Uh, we have the in-person camps coming up in October for a lot of the youth in the area. And at the end of this month, actually the 25th through the 27th out in Hudson, uh, sort of a, a, a precursor to futures. I don't even know. They're still years away from future camps. It's essentially the day camp, but, but for a little further. Yeah. And you know what the, uh, and I'll speak, I guess a little more on the Hudson camp, but that, you know, that's, that's just the youth camp, but um, myself and Corey Lieberman are, are running that entire camp. We are on the ice with those kids. And for every single session, we're the only two coaches there. Um, you know, we wanted to do that to, uh, number one, give, give young kids a fun experience uh, and be able to be on the ice with coaches from our league, but, but enjoy that and not, not have it be such a serious evaluation type weekend, um, like what's going to happen to them in the next couple of years. We really want them to enjoy their experience around us. And, and uh, you know, selfishly, we, we want them to be familiar with our name. You know, we truly do. We want kids around the Midwest and around our area, especially Wisconsin and Minnesota, when they think of the USHO, we want them to think of our organization and our names and our team name. And the only way you do that is you get out and you start at the grassroots, which we believe is youth hockey. And again, you show those kids a fun experience, show the parents a good experience. Yes, do we want to give them some tools to carry into their season and help them develop? And maybe maybe a kid comes out of those uh, three days of camp, you know, it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday with one thing that he learned and maybe it helps them throughout the year. That, that That's a positive thing in our eyes. But at the end of the day, we want them to have a great experience over the weekend and, and be familiar with the, the uh, w- with our name. And when they think of our league, we want them to think of the Madison Capitals. So, Tommy, more personally now, what's been going on at the Upton household? What have you guys been doing? What's What's been on the TV? What books have you been reading? People want to know what's going on. You know what? Uh, so, on the TV, we watch a movie every night. Big movie people here in this uh, in this house. So... It depends on whether or not Briggs, our son, lets us pick the movie or he picks the movie. So the nice thing is I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty big movie guy myself. So, uh, you know, I always tell him like, Hey, if you let me pick a movie, I promise you'll like it. So I think the most recent one he's hooked up on is, uh, I had him watch a league of their own. Remember that old thing? The game of baseball players. He loved that. So obviously there's a, some pretty funny scenes in there that as a five-year-old he, he likes and he thinks it's pretty funny some of the stuff that said so he's pretty hooked up on that movie right now he wants to move, watch it like every night so uh you know personally um i'll pretty much watch anything uh you know books and stuff i'm, I'm a big uh i either read american history books or i read coaching books pretty pretty simple <laughs> when it comes to that stuff but around the house uh we got a new puppy. Nice. So that's, yeah, that's been great. And it's you and Corey both got new puppies then, huh? Yeah, Corey's a copycat. Corey, Corey, I went and got mine. Corey had to go get his. So, <laughs> uh, I've been teasing about that, but yeah, we uh, we have an eight-year-old black lab. Natty is her name. We've had her for years. Sarah and I, since before Briggs was born. Obviously, he's only five, but uh, we got a probably thirteen weeks old now. I um, a golden doodle. And Briggs named him Yankee for Yankee Doodle, which is pretty clever, we thought. And uh, we're big Yankees fans in our family, so uh, it fits the bill. Oh, and the dog's got the same birthday as Derek Jeter, so. Oh, there you go. Kind of an omen, right, with the name like Yankee. So yeah. uh, <laughs> that's that's been fine. Obviously, we've been cleaning up some accidents on the floor and doing a lot more in that of that than I would like, but. I think our older dog's loving it because she's like, holy cow, I'm not getting yelled at or anything. Like this little this little puppy's taking all the heat here. So uh, but yeah, either than that, we've been pretty we've been pretty busy with with the new puppy and then Briggs started school uh, two weeks ago, started kindergarten. So we've been doing the school thing and the days that he's not in school in person, they gotta do the virtual stuff now. And so Sarah's been doing that with him. And um, we live right across the street from a baseball field. So every night uh, we go play catch and we hit batting practice. Or, or not we Briggs does we pitch to him and Sarah shags balls so we got a nice little routine going on here at the house right now now that since we don't have some hockey you know yet for another couple of weeks so yeah and we'll sort of take this piece by piece now you mentioned on the book front 
you like the American history books. I know you and I were chatting a little bit before this. I, I think people have to see what you have in that room. You mentioned, in the office. In the office. You mentioned you had some stuff. Oh, yeah. I got some, I got some memorabilia. Can we see it real quick? <laughs> Let's see. Got the, wall, see the old got flag, George right. Washington photo. What else? Photo. Got a couple, uh, a couple old plates with, with like Uncle Sam on them and Washington crossing the Delaware and stuff like that. So, and then over here, you got a bad angle out of it. I got an old map of Long Island and all that. My mom goes to a lot of estate sales and she knows I like this stuff. So she always, she always finds this stuff and sends it to us or brings it when she comes and visits. But Sarah doesn't let me hang it up anywhere else except for in this office. So this is kind of my spot to hang up my history stuff. She always says. I don't even think I get allowed to put anything up in, in that rooms anymore. Well, I'll take it. If I can, if, yeah, if I'm, if I'm getting allowed to hang up a, a couple things, I'll, I'll take it. So <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of a big, uh, history, history, uh, nerd, I guess you would say when it comes to that, I wasn't always, but a couple of years ago, right after Briggs was born, for some reason, I watched a documentary and started getting into it. And yeah, it's pretty much consumed a lot of my free time. I'll say that. But my grandfather actually taught his high school history in uh, in Canarsie, I believe. Really? Back in the day, yeah. Sweet. Yeah, sweet. No, I uh, history runs here a bit. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. No, I love I love I love talking history to some people. I, I'm sure some of my buddies get sick of it. <laughs> get really into it. I know I know Sarah's sick of it, but her being the smartest yeah. in the room. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, the history thing's kind of been a big thing the past couple of years, you know. And uh, every morning I wake up and I, I I read in some in in some type of fashion. I like to read something, and like I said, it's either it's either American history book or it's a coaching book. Right now, I'm on a not coaching, but a, a leadership book. But mm -hmm. after this is done, I'll probably go back to another history book. I try to try to alternate. You know, I think you need you need a little bit of that release from what you do every day, right? Yeah, the history stuff is kind of fun for me. Uh, you mentioned you have that map of Long Island. Obviously, you're from New York. Do you have what's your football team then? Are you a Jets fan, a Giants fan, or Cowboys? I, I swear, and I, I bet you all the people in Madison are going to think I'm BSing here, but I'm a Packers fan. I like the Packers. <laughs> you might hate that as a Chicago. <laughs> I would imagine. I've pledged my allegiance to the Browns a couple of years. I said, if you're going bad, you got to go with the worst and ride them all the way. Okay, there you go. Down. All right, touche. <laughs> I just, you know what? When I got to Stevens Point years ago, I uh, I went to a Packers game my freshman year, and obviously great experience at Lambeau. And people in town really like the Packers in in everywhere, like everywhere in Wisconsin. Everywhere. <laughs> so I kind of just jumped on the bandwagon. You know, and then who could not like Brett Favre back in the day, right? So, um, got a lot of respect for him, what he did as a as a quarterback, and how tough he was, and all that. So, yeah, I'd say if I had to pick an NFL team, it'd probably be the Packers. Yeah, there. Even growing up in Chicago and being a Bears fan at the time, there were Packers teams that I'd watch with again Brett Favre, Donald Driver, Greg Jennings, among where my brother was a Packers fan, and I just couldn't get away. And I was like, I like these teams, but I don't like the team. It was very. Yeah, tough. there you go. Yeah, there you go. Very you tough. Be respect them. So there you go. Exactly. That's how the Red Sox fans feel about the Yankees? I bet. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, you mentioned you're a big movie guy. Movies every night. Yeah. What is your favorite movie of all time then? Ooh, favorite movie of all time. You know what? Uh, I haven't watched in a while, but I, Good Will Hunting, I think, has got to be one of the best movies ever. Amazing. It's got to be one of the best. You know, and then obviously sports movies, you know, Young Blood, hockey, ball down, <laughs> baseball, you can. But no, I, I think Good Will Hunting might be one of the best, like, just movies ever. Very good. Bus movie, Wolf of Wall Street, Goodfellas, can't go wrong there. Um, Good Will Hunting is probably the best movie, though. Yeah. I always. Sure. I started to uh, lean Little Miss Sunshine became my favorite movie when I really? saw it. Yeah. The girl, they're in the van driving across country, right? Yep, that one. Car. It just, I don't know why. It just shows like, because everybody, everybody thinks that there's problems with their own family and they think, you know, I'm, I'm mad at this person, that person. You watch that movie and it's like, you see this dysfunctional family where they all have high hopes and, and things just happen along the way and they just trudge through. And, you know, by the end of it, yeah, they may not have it all in terms of money and things and, and property, but in terms of just like being with each other and loving each other like they they fought through it. and to me that was just like it was a, it was a great story and it was a different way to put it out and 
again, I mean, you look at the cast, they have Greg Kinnear and, and an early uh, Steve Carell as well. So it's phenomenal. Yeah. Look at you getting all deep. I, like I love that. that. I love that movie. And it's just hilarious when she dances at the end. Favorite scene of all time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are some good flicks there. Yeah. Um, yeah, Good Will Hunting is probably my, my favorite, favorite movie of all time, I would say. But obviously, I, like I said, I love, I haven't come across too many movies I don't like. Mm -hmm. So, Are you a big TV guy then? I know, for me personally, I like, I think I like TV series better than I do movies. But... You know what? Uh, we used to be, right? Before we had Briggs, he kind of took over the whole deal. So, <laughs> um, and we have Roku. We don't have like regular Yep. Cable anymore. Um, if I had to pick a TV show, though, best of all time, Friends. Like, not even close. Not <laughs> I'm even going through that right now. Not, not even close. Yeah, Friends. Yeah, that's that's no question for me. All right. So I, I grabbed some questions online. So okay. they were like interview questions. So we'll see sort of which ones are good, which ones aren't. All right. There your you reactions. go. Um, so the first one, are you more of a planner? Or are you more of a fly by the seat of your pantser? Planner. Yeah. I'm a planner. Yeah, I, I, it makes me uncomfortable to not have a, a plan in place, I think. <laughs> is your wife more of a, is she the same then? Because I feel like for a lot of relationships, you have one and the other. You know what? Well, Sarah's a big planner because she, you know, without her, the whole thing would crumble, right? Uh, but, um, she can go at this. She can, she can do it on the fly if she needs to, but she, she's a planner now, but if she needs to do it on the fly, she does. Whereas I, I kind of struggle like that. It kind of throws me off. It's funny. Uh, what I don't plan too far in advance, not to explain I too much, but I don't, I don't plan too far in advance. Like I can't plan something three weeks from now. Okay. Something three days I have to have plan. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Because we go on vacations and I feel like our minute to minute, our whole day is planned. Yeah. Not yeah. by me. Not at all by me. <laughs> Understood. Um, what would you say is your spirit animal? Spirit animal. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. Okay. Probably a gorilla. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Because they can be mean when they need to be mean, but sometimes they're goofy and they do funny stuff, right? When you see there them. you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to say like a bear or a lion or anything like that. Like, a, you know, those things are intense all the time. So, yeah, maybe a gorilla. Gorilla is kind of turned on, turned off, I guess. Uh, sort of in the same vein, one superpower, what are you picking? Oh, man, the fly. Not even close. 100%. So, as a big movie buff, Who's the guy playing you in a movie about your life then? Who, Brad Pitt? Because of looks? Brad, Brad Pitt like 15 years ago. <laughs> Fight Club Brad, uh, Brad Pitt. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, Fight Club Brad Pitt. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um, I'm going to go here. You win a million dollars. What's the first thing you're doing with that money? Ooh, I'm going to buy something for my parents. For sure. Because I, I owe them a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. and then uh and then get get a place on a lake somewhere for the family yeah that'll probably be the next thing uh, and then the last one i know you and i talked about it last time the sort of the general confession um something that doesn't have to be something that you dislike that other people like but like for me and we're on the topic of movies never seen um the godfather you haven't never seen the godfather still oh my gosh yeah you gotta get with it i know i feel like there are a lot of like i love old movies and i've watched a bunch but they're more the comedy ones than they are sort of the drama and, okay. and that's fair absolutely there there's a list of movies that i can go with. i mean that shawshank i know a lot of people love shawshank obviously you seen that no a lot of those types of movies i feel i haven't seen but like the animal houses and stuff like that love them yeah oh yeah animal house great but you gotta mix in the shawshank redemption yeah, I yeah. Know. We'll, we'll get we'll get it this year. Don't worry. <laughs> we'll get on the movies. So. What, about, what about you? Anything? Oh, you know what? People don't. Uh, probably something that a lot of people I talk to are like, "Oh, I can't believe you don't listen to that." Is uh, spitting chicklets. Yeah, 
I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't have anything against it. I just, mm -hmm. I've, I've never listened to it. I've heard a lot about it. I just, I don't, I don't do it. And a lot of people that I know are like, oh, I kind of can't believe you can't, you don't listen to that. So there's my one, uh, my one thing. Do you follow like Barstool and stuff like that? It, Cause it's in the same vein. Yeah, I guess, I mean, I guess a little bit, but I'm not like a, yeah, a lot, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we got we got enough humor in our, in, I got enough humor in my life. <laughs> there are enough things you can go around and see yeah. and watch and listen yeah. to. So, yeah. So, all right. Well, so we got for you this week. Obviously, we'll hold some back. We have, like we said, plenty of weeks up ahead. Um, camps coming up. Virtual camp again started this week. Day camps next uh, next month, and the Hudson camp coming up end of the month. So, uh, if people have questions, they can contact you and Corey, the front office, anything there. Um, aside from that. Coach, we, we look forward to seeing you again next week on this. Appreciate it as always. Yeah, come thanks a lot. Come with some good questions again. I, I still have a small list, so. Oh boy. All right. Appreciate <laughs> it. Okay. Thanks. Bye.